Hello, everybody. How's our afternoon going? It's good, thank you. Excellent, excellent. Good to hear. I think this is the last session today, if I'm not mistaken. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and get rolling here. Well, we still have some people dribbling in. Even so, it looks like it's going to be a, a fairly small group here. So feel free if you want to unmute. Um, feel free to interrupt any time with, with uh, questions or comments. Group this small, that shouldn't be a problem. OK, um, this session is called uh, Engineering Design. Uh, that can mean a lot of different things. Um, what we are focusing on here are uh, using, using the computer uh, to design ships uh, and to do that uh, in, in a way that satisfies uh, some of the uh, math and NGSS science standards for fourth and fifth grades. Now, having said that, uh, the ideas the principles, the, 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 the tools and the skills that we're using here are not just limited to fourth and fifth grade. Uh, you can use uh, the software we're gonna work with at uh, any grade. Um, and the ideas that we're working with um, also are, are, are useful for, for any grade. And if when it comes time to implement it in the classroom, uh, you're not interested in doing ships, but uh, want your students to design something else, that's fine too, because uh, the software I'm going to show you is very powerful uh, and can do all sorts of things. Um, so this is just to give you a, a sort of idea for, for what it can do. Uh, my contact information is up here, my, my email address. Um, Please feel free uh, afterwards uh, to uh, shoot me an email if you have any questions at all, uh, or if you decide to implement this or something similar uh, in your classroom and you wanna share your experience or your frustration or ask a question, um, I, I would love to hear from you. So what are we going to do today? Today, you're going to learn how your students can use computers, engineering, and mathematics to design ships. Um, we're going to start with an introduction of looking at a book called The Girl with a Mind for Math, um, which is something that you can use uh, with this curriculum if you decide uh, to use that. Uh, it's a wonderful book, and I'll, I'll show it to you in just a minute and talk more about that. Um, next, I'm going to introduce you to a computer-aided design program called Tinkercad. Um, it is designed specifically for uh, students uh, as young as elementary uh, to learn how to create three-dimensional designs. And if you happen to have a 3D printer at your school, uh, they can actually uh, print from them. Um, finally, I'm going to show you the design challenges themselves. I have a, a separate challenge for fourth grade and fifth grade because they do uh, work with slightly different math standards. And I'll also uh, talk about what you could do for sixth grade. And uh, if you request, I'd be happy to talk about uh, how you might approach uh, problems in other grades as well. Okay, The Girl with a Mind for Math, the story of Ray Montague. Ray Montague um, did pioneering work 
in computer-aided design uh, for the U.S. Navy. Uh, she worked at the Naval Sea Systems Command uh, at the same time that, uh, that I did. I was a young engineer working there at the same time, although I did not uh, know Ray. Um, I probably passed her in the hallway any number of times, but I really didn't uh, discover her story, uh, which is a fascinating story, until many years later. Um, not only did she pioneer a very challenging science, but to, to, to even be there uh, in the room uh, to show what she could do, she had to overcome a lot of obstacles uh, that were thrown in her way uh, by a society that, uh, you know, wasn't used to seeing people like Ray um, designing ships. Um, so she encountered uh, a bias and, and, uh, and discrimination of, of, of all sorts. And the book, in addition to talking about what, how ships got to get designed, um, shows her approach to solving those problems, to overcoming those obstacles. And even if your students uh, don't face those particular obstacles, uh, her mindset, uh, her grit, uh, I think is really illuminating and uh, a good advice for people overcoming any obstacle that stands between them and what they want to achieve. Um, and if after looking at the book, you're, you're intrigued more, um, it's, you can uh, uh, Google, Google Ray Montague, you can, you can see interviews with her. She's, she's just a lovely person and uh, it tells some, some really amazing stories about what she had to go through uh, to achieve uh, at the levels that she did. Um, the book uh, you can get it at Amazon. Uh, you can also, if you look on YouTube, there are several different teachers uh, who have recorded uh, their own dramatic readings for it. And, and you can take your pick amongst them uh, if you want. Oh, Krista says she left that book with her sub today. Fantastic. Fantastic. Uh, yeah, it's, it's really nice. Um, Okay, so that's the girl with the mind for math. Uh, to be honest, it was encountering this book that made me want to do this curriculum. That's, that's why I got involved with Tinkercad, was, was this book. Okay, so what is Tinkercad? Um, it's 3D modeling software. Uh, and, and, and here are some of the important things I want you to know about. Number one, it's free. Uh, uh, this won't cost you anything. It's web-based, which means you don't have to download and install anything on your machines. Any computer that can reach the internet should be able to, to operate Tinkercad. Uh, this is particularly nice these days uh, during a pandemic when so many students are uh, stuck at home, you can access it from their home. Uh, can you use iPads? Yes, you can. Now, one caution I'll make is that your students will be manipulating 3D shapes and doing that on a touch screen is challenging. It can be done, um, but it's much easier if you can plug a mouse into that device. So a mouse is highly recommended uh, if you're using a device that does not have a mouse interface or you're just not going to have them in your classroom, just play with it yourself first before plunging into it and ask yourself the question, will my students be able to do this without frustration? Uh, to be honest, generally students get less frustrated with this type of thing than I do. Um, so, it, so it may be hard to tell, but I, I found it frustrating trying to do it with the touch screen. Um, so, so I do recommend using a mouse. Uh, Tinkercad is based off of a, a very professional uh, software suite that's actually used by real engineers. Tinkercad is just a different version of that uh, that was specifically uh, designed for students and teachers to be using it for the, the, the very types of projects that, that we're gonna look at today. 
Having said that, it's also capable of doing a hundred other things that are more advanced uh, that, that we're just not gonna touch. Although your students um, may very well dive into that and enjoy it. Uh, there's a couple pictures of ships here that were designed uh, using Tinkercad. Uh, the top one shows just how realistic you can be. Um, however, we're not going to do that at fourth or fifth grade, or, or at least not the, the, the students that I've been most familiar with. Uh, we're going to create a ship that more, looks more like the one on the bottom. So very basic, simple geometries, uh, prisms, rectangles, uh, things for which we can easily calculate uh, surface area, perimeter, or, or even volume if you get up to uh, sixth grade, or if your students are there already. Now, our first step is to uh, go, go check out Tinkercad. Uh, what we're doing today is, is you're going to play around with it. I'm not, I'm not going to talk for an hour. Um, here's how you get there. Um, you, ju you could just Google Tinkercad, probably faster than typing that into your URL. Although I guess I could try and put this in the uh, uh, chat window if you like. Um, oops, got somebody joining us here. There we go. Okay. Um, so I want you to go to that site. In the upper right hand side of the screen when you get there is a join now button. You click that. There'll be a blue button labeled educator start here and you can click that. Now I got a note here that when your students join, they follow a different process. Um, they actually have an automated classroom system that you can set up. And in fact, if you were a Google Classroom user, they have extra bells and whistles for that too. Uh, you can you can do a lot with the uh, with the classroom features, including look at and monitor what your students are doing. We're not going to mess with any of that today. Today, I want you to approach it more or less as a student would. So go ahead and head to that site and see if you can get there. And give me feedback, please, either either uh, audio or in the chat room to let me know uh, when you're there. Um, or if you're experiencing some type of trouble that you can't get there. Excellent, Chris is in already. There, I just put the link down in the uh, chat window in case that's easier. I'm gonna go there myself and share my screen in a moment. Mine will look different than yours. Uh, once you're there and you start doing things, um, the screen changes a bit. Um, I'm not gonna see buttons on my screen to join, which you will. Um, I'm gonna, you're gonna see uh, different projects show up on my screen that you won't have on yours because you haven't really done anything with it yet.
Okay. Desiree is in there. All right, now this is what my screen looks like. Um, my recent designs. So everything that you design, everything that your students design uh, will be saved with their account uh, so that when they log on, they'll see all their stuff and they can just click on it. So you don't have to uh, go through the effort of saving your work. It saves automatically, which is nice if you're like me and tend to forget to do things like that. Now, what I want to do first is uh, take a look at tutorials for this. Um, I'm going to click on the big Tinkercad icon here. Okay. There. Or maybe let's see. I'm going to click on this learn button up here. Here we go. It puts these called starters up here. And I'm going to say, see all the starters. Whoop. There are like 10 of these different little tutorials here. And this is what I recommend starting with for students. Um, you don't have to give them instructions. Um, each of these little tutorials uh, takes, you know, any, anywhere from, you know, uh, 30 seconds to two minutes to go through. And it shows all the features uh, that you need. In fact, you really don't even need all of these. Um, but we're going to spend a little bit of time today um, playing with these before I go on with the slideshow. Um, see if you can find these direct starters. Go up to the Learn tab and then starters. And the first one is called place it. Go ahead and give that a try. I'm gonna jump on there myself for a moment. I'm just waiting to, to keep an eye on the chat screen in case somebody's having trouble. And if you are having trouble and, and you want to work at, at your own pace later, that's fine too. Remember also that this is being recorded and you can go back and look at it again. Okay, I'm going to click on the first starter here called Place It. All right, here's my screen. Um, Along the left panel here is all the instructions for this tutorial. It tells us what we're going to do. And all we're gonna do in this tutorial is take a red box and put it out on our work plane. Your work plane is basically your tabletop. This is where you're designing. So we're going to put a, a red block out on the plane. Where are we gonna put it? We're gonna put it right here where this orange template is. They're showing us where they want us to put the red block. And that's it. That's all this tutorial is. So that's how simple it is. Uh, but if you need step-by-step -step instructions, they're right here. Uh, it will tell you how to look around. Um, if you want to rotate like I'm doing here, that's the right mouse button. You click and hold, and that lets me look at something from every angle. You'll notice also there's a, a cube up in the top left that says top, front, right. You can also click on that and get different facings if you just want to only look at one thing at a time. I kind of like it, keep it in motion though. Okay, so here is a palette of basic shapes and that's what we're gonna use. We don't need any more than basic shapes. I'm gonna take this box, I'm gonna left click it and I'm gonna drag it over here, boom. There it is. I just put a block on our workspace. There's all sorts of things we can do to manipulate it, but all I'm really supposed to do for this tutorial is to get it over here. I'm going to left click on it now and move it till it's where they want it. Yay! I did it. And I'll click the next button and I get confetti to help me celebrate 
my remarkable achievement of putting a red block in the right place. We can go on then, um, let's see, I'll click done here and go to the next to next one of these starter tutorials. And this one is called View It. And wow, I've already given you this tutorial. It's just telling you how to look at, diff at the object you have here from different directions. Left click and drag anywhere on the view cube. Oh, okay, so you can do that too. You can click with the left mouse and change your view from that cube. Or you can just pick the particular faces. I find that kind of annoying. I don't like that. Or you can do what I was telling you earlier, which is right click anywhere at all in your workspace and you right click and hold, you can move it around that way. So that's it. That's all this tutorial is, is to show you how to look at things from different angles. So I'll click my next button. Oh, learn to zoom. You can zoom in and out using your mouse wheel. Uh, if you have a touchpad, um, well, it says use, use whatever your, your pad usually uses to zoom. That's generally putting two fingers down and bringing them apart or closer together. So that's all there is to that. Okay, and that's basically all this tutorial is. Yay, confetti. So there, I've already done two of the eight tutorials you need to design a ship. The plus button on the keypad will work too. I assume that's for zooming in and out. Let me try. Oh, except I have one of these funky compressed keyboards. I don't even have that. Okay. Okay, so these are the tutorials. Um, they're, they're pretty simple, self-explanatory. Uh, let students move at their own pace. To be honest, you'll have students who get impatient with this and they can probably figure it out just by playing around with it in less time. So <laughs> whether you wanna cut them loose to do that, uh, that's up to you. Okay, let me get my PowerPoint back up again. And then I'll share this with you. Okay. So uh, these are the uh, quick start tasks that I recommend doing. There's a couple more on that site uh, that do other cosmetic things, but I don't think we really need them. But I, I do these with students anyway. Okay. Now we get to the ship design challenges. Um, depending upon grade level, I've got two here, a fourth grade and a fifth grade. Fourth graders, we're going to give them a challenge. And we want this to be sort of based in realism. Um, I, I always uh, like to come up with scenarios that put students in the position of being real people in the community, professionals, uh, you know, in this case, engineers. Um, and the task they're given is to imagine that they work for a company and the U.S. Coast Guard wants a new design for a Coast Guard cutter. Now, a Coast Guard cutter is, uh, it's, a, it's a large ship that patrols off the coast of the U.S., uh, it basically, uh, you know, is patrolling for smugglers. Uh, it's also helping with search and rescue, uh, things like that. 
It's uh, one of the, the, the larger types of ships that the Coast Guard operates. Um, has a helicopter pad on the back. It has a lot of boats that they can lower for, for, for doing other tasks. And that's what we're gonna have fourth graders design. Fifth graders are going to design a fleet oiler. Uh, an oiler uh, is a ship that carries fuel for other ships. Uh, the Navy sends task forces, uh, groups of ships out uh, all around the globe. Uh, they can't always just stop at a gas station and, and refill. So they need ships that carry fuel oil uh, to them and refuel them at sea. And those are fleet oilers. Although they belong to the Navy, they're actually crewed by civilians. And the reason why we do it differently for fourth and fifth grades, for, for fifth grade, we want to calculate volumes because how much uh, fuel oil this ship carries is an important part of its design. And calculating volumes of uh, rectangular shapes is a fifth grade standard. Could your fourth graders do it? Sure, they probably can. They may already be doing it. But that's how I broke it up. And I'll show you these uh, design challenges in a moment, and then we'll actually uh, work through them. Um, before we do that, I wanted to just show you, uh, I know this is a lot to read, uh, the learning objectives and standards. Um, I already talked about the objectives. These are the particular standards, if you're curious. Uh, NGSS uh, grades three through five um, engineering standards, engineering design. And then there's uh, a whole slew of math standards um, that run all the way up through fifth grade. And if you're doing sixth grade, uh, the most important standard to add uh, is ratios. And I'll tell you how you can do that uh, with these uh, ship design activities as well, if you're interested. Okay, let me stop that. And I'm going to open a document. You can uh, download uh, both a recording of this session as well as supporting documents, including the ship design challenges for fourth and fifth grade. I'm going to uh, open up one here on the desktop and then share that with you and go over it. Okay. You should now be seeing uh, a student handout called Designing a Coast Guard Cutter. Um, at this point, I can no longer see my chat. So if, uh, if you can't see this, uh, unmute yourself and, and holler at me and I'll, I'll make the fix. So here we give them the problem. Talk about what a Coast Guard Cutter is. Uh, each student, or you can have them work in groups if you like. I, I think that's uh, always a good practice, even if you have one-to-one -one machines. Each, each group working uh, can consider itself a, a separate company, and they'd all be competing for this design contract. Only the best design will be accepted. So as a naval engineer, your job is to create the best design. Now we get to the ship specifications. Specifications tell an engineer what the item they're designing has to be able to do. So here we talk about is a simplified diagram of the ship. Uh, we talk about here's the middle section of the ship. Here's the pointy end is the front. And in the Navy, we call that the bow. And the uh, section at the very back, we call the stern. And the Coast Guard wants the ship to be between 12 and 16 meters wide, a length of no more than 120 meters. And they want this deck space to have as much area as possible. 
And that's it. You a very simple set of specifications. For, for, for a real ship, this it printed out, this would be a book that's about three inches thick. Okay, so what are we going to do with this on Tinkercad? Well, there is a whole step-by-step -step set of instructions for students to design their ship, starting with the middle section here actually starting with the name of the ship. It's gonna be a lot more fun for your students once they come up with a name for their ship. Um, so this gives them instructions for how to create the middle section, which is just a big rectangle. They're gonna calculate the area of the top surface. And we don't want our crew falling overboard. So they're going to have to uh, build a railing all around the deck space in order to know how much railing is needed, they're gonna to have to calculate the perimeter. So here is a worksheet for them to calculate perimeter. They move on to the bow section, tells them how big it should be, gives them advice for, for how to do it in Tinkercad. I'm just rolling through this kind of quickly here. Here's instructions for making the stern section. They're gonna calculate the area of the top surface. You want to make sure that's big enough for your helicopters to land. The final part is the superstructure. This is everything that's built up on top of the ship that kind of looks like a building sitting in the middle of the ship. Uh, and this is where most of the crew uh, live and work. So that's it. That's their, their design specifications. Just a couple pages there. And now I'm going to actually go into Tinkercad and I'm going to design a ship. And it's up to you. I'll leave it uh, at your discretion. You can either just follow along with what I'm doing, or you can entirely ignore what I'm doing and design a ship using Tinkercad. Um, so that's about what I'm going to be doing uh, for, for the next uh, 20 minutes or so. Does anybody have any questions or, or comments at this point in time? before I move back into actually building something with Tinkercad. If you don't want to use these ships as your examples, you can do other things. If you live in other parts of Illinois uh, that aren't near the water, uh, you're probably near a river. Uh, Illinois has navigable waterways in many places. There are tugboats that move barges up and down these rivers. Uh, you could have them design a tugboat or a cargo barge. Uh, you could combine that for a field trip to the uh, a local port authority. I know if you live in central or southern Illinois, you'd probably think you're not anywhere near a port, but you are. They're river ports. Um, and uh, you might be able to get a nice field trip out of it. Okay. Let me go ahead and, okay, here's Tinkercad again. Let me share my screen with that. All right. So I'm looking at my instructions. Uh, let's see. I need, I need to start a new project. So let me get out of this. Just go back to my, my home space here. And I'm going to click Create New Design. Uh, you can always get to this if you can find the, the Tinkercad logo will take you to this page. I'm going to create new design. So that's just going to give me a, a blank page. You could have stayed where you were and just deleted that, that red box if you wanted. Okay, um, to make the middle section, my instructions are to drag a red block onto the screen. Well, I know how to do that. I've done that before. And it says make the height 10 millimeters. Well, when I touch my, 
hover my mouse over these different points on it, I can see all the dimensions. And it's the vertical dimension that I'm most interested in. And it looks like it's, it's starting out as 20, 20 millimeters high. We're making a, a, a one to 1,000 scale model. So every millimeter here, whoops, represents one meter of actual height. So I'm just going to bring this down. I'm left -click, clicking and dragging to 10 millimeters. So I just kind of flattens my box. So I got the height right. Now the length is supposed to be 60 to 80 millimeters. That's what it says in my specifications. Well, let's see, I guess I'm gonna do the length this way. So I'm just gonna drag this somewhere between 60 and 80. Does it matter what? I don't know. How about 71 millimeters? We'll try that. That's between 60 and 80. There we go. That's starting to look more like the middle section of a ship. Now the width is supposed to be 12 to 16 millimeters. What is it right now? Right now it looks like it's 20, that's too wide. So let's see. I'll just make it, how about 14? There we go. Now I've got the dimensions. The next step it tells me to do is to find the surface area up here. Well, if I have a box and the top of that box is 14 millimeters by 71, I multiply those together and that will give me the area. And that's what they do. How do I find the perimeter? Well, that's just the four sides added up. 14 plus 14 plus 71 plus 71. That'll give me the perimeter area around the top. So I'll know how much railing I'll need to install there to make sure my sailors don't fall overboard. Okay, that's it for the middle section. Now I'm onto the bow section. And the instructions say, drag a green roof onto the grid. What's a green roof? So I'm looking over here at my palette of shapes. And well, this one's green. Oh, and it says roof. It actually even looks like a roof. So I just left click. And I drag one out there. And now it's on my work plane. But this is supposed to be the bow, the front of the ship. I need this pointy part facing forward. So I'm going to have to rotate this. And how do I rotate it? Oh, I see. If I click on these little curvy arrow things, it tells me I can rotate this in all three dimensions all three directions. Let's see, is this what I want? No, that's not the way I want to rotate. Let me try this one. Yeah, there we go. I'm going to rotate it 90 degrees. Now I got the pointy end facing forward, which is definitely what you want for a ship. Okay, it says the height here should be between 12 and 15 millimeters. So Let's see, my height is currently 20, that's too high. I need to get it down between 12 and 15. Yeah, 14 might work. There we go. Uh, it says the width should be the same as the middle section. Well, that makes sense. If I'm going to move this and join it on over here, it should be the same width. So if this part is, 14 millimeters wide, then I need to make my bow section 14. So there we go. What it doesn't tell me is what the dimension should be in this direction. So that's entirely up to students. You may tell them if you want that the longer and pointier this is, the faster your ship's going to be, the easier it's going to be to cut through water at high speed, which for a Coast Guard cutter, cutting through the water at high speed is definitely something you wanna be able to do. Now I just gotta move this over here to I know, hook them up. There are alignment tools to help you do this. 
I can select both of these pieces and click this alignment tool and say, let's move everything to match up. There we go. Well, that didn't work. Got to get this back up. There we go. So that's what we look like from the side. And this is what our ship's looking like from the top. And I want to connect these two together. So I'm going to select this one. Then I'm going to shift and select this one. And now I'm going to group them with this tool. You'll know that you have grouped them together into one object when they both change to be the same color. All right, that's it for my bow section. Then I get to stern section. And it says, drag the stern section. This is where the crew will launch and recover their small boats. It wants another red box out here. So I'm going to make my stern section out of another red box. It says the height is supposed to be five millimeters. Well, it's currently 20, so I'm going to grab that little tab there and move it down to five. I guess it makes sense to have it low at the end if you're going to uh, have to launch and recover boats from that. It says the width should be the same as the middle section. And my middle section is 14 wide, so I want this to be 14 wide as well. Whoop. 14, there we go. And what about the length? It says make the length the same as the width. So 14 again. So this should look like a square from above. There we go. Now I just need to attach it to the rest of my ship. And I can slide it there. Hmm. That doesn't look like the same width. That's 14 wide. Well, that's 16. Let me fix that up. There we go. Hmm. Having trouble aligning that. So I'll use my alignment tool. I select both. Uh, I'm going to click alignment. Now I can just touch all these different round points. And it's going to show me this is where it would move the blocks to. I don't want it to go up. Well, that's close enough for now. <laughs> I can fiddle with it somewhere to get it perfect. Uh, but now I want to join this part to the rest. So I already have it selected. Now I'm going to select the rest of the ship. So I have both parts selected. I'll come up to the grouping tool. And now I just have one piece. If I did it right, yeah, I can move it around and it's just one piece. There's one final part to put on our ship, and that's the superstructure up here that's going to contain all the offices and the bridge where they steer the ship from. And it wants that to be a, a sort of rectangular, so it tells me to take another red block down. And it says make the height anywhere from 8 to 10 millimeters. So you can pick whatever you like, whatever you think is aesthetically pleasing. Uh, nine will work. A width of anywhere from eight to 12. I'll make it a nine. And the length anywhere from 32 to 48. All right, that looks like my superstructure.
Now we just got to get that up on top. And there's a little cone here up on top. If I grab hold of that, I can raise it in elevation. How high do I need to raise it? Well, this part of the ship is 14 millimeters high. So that's how high up I need to come. All right, I got it at the right height. Now I just need the slider on there. Where do I want to put this? Whoops, maybe I didn't get the right height. There we go. That looks, there we, there we go, that looks better. That might work. So let me click that, click this, group it. And that's it. I've just uh, designed a Coast Guard cutter that met all the specifications. Now I could go back. I think there's uh, one specification. I, th I think it's the, there's a maximum length. It's not supposed to be more than 120 meters, is it? Nope, it's only 108. So I'm good. There we go. Now, that's all your students have to do. Could they do more? Absolutely. Maybe they want to... Uh, you know, this has engines that uh, put exhaust out. Maybe they want to put a funnel, what we would call a, you know, a smokestack if it were a factory. On a ship, we call it a funnel. And uh, maybe we want to put one of these up here, add that to my design. They could uh, put windows if they want, railings. Uh, if they want to design little boats to uh, put on the back or, uh, you know, whatever they want to stick on there. So that's the basic idea. I'm sorry, I've got to get the smokes that this funnel on there now. There we go. Now I'm happy. Now I now 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 we can finish the, the workshop. Okay. So that's it. Now you can save this as a file and export it. And if you have a 3D printer uh, at your works, at your, uh, at your school or in your district, you can actually uh, have students print these out. I would not expect this to float. This specification uh, really wasn't to make one that actually floats on water, uh, but that would be a neat follow-on project to do. So uh, that's the idea. So students get to uh, learn how to use uh, what I think is a really powerful tool for uh, doing design work. And they can design anything they want with that. Uh, if you've played around with that, you'll notice there are different settings on there. You can build things using Lego blocks as, as a standard template or Minecraft blocks. Uh, so there's a lot of things that students can do for it, do with it, uh, other than than what you just saw there. So does anyone have questions about uh, about how it works or or what you might do with it? Any concerns you have about what you might encounter in the classroom? I know every every class is different, every school is different. All have uh, unique challenges and, and circumstances. I'd be Happy to uh, brainstorm with you to uh, see if you can come up with uh, solutions to problems that you might anticipate. Oh, how do you ungroup, somebody asks. Uh, great question. I'm going to share my screen again. Here we go. If I select the ship, this was the grouping button here, the one right next to it is ungroup. So that will break it apart. And you may have to do this in several different pieces. This, is, this can be a little finicky. There we go. Like I just uh, ungrouped the front. So you can take it apart, put it back together, change it bit by bit. Great question.
Other questions? Yeah, most, the, the interface is really pretty intuitive once you start playing with it. Honestly, playing with it uh, is probably easier than listening to somebody talk about it. Any other questions, comments? Great, I'm glad you enjoyed it. Uh, again, um, you've got my uh, email address on there. If you have questions later, feel free to contact me. Um, if you come up with some new interesting things to do with Tinkercad uh, that, 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 that you'd love to share out, let me know, because uh, I'd love to see what you're doing with it. Hey, so, Patrick. Yes, this is, this is Lydia. Sorry, I was late, but um, I just want to add in, I did do this with seventh graders and there are several under the teach section. There are other small projects that um, teachers can go find and uh, manipulate a little bit and have um, students design as well. Absolutely. Thanks, Lydia. Yes, um, there is, a, is an enormous amount of resources available for Tinkercad. Um, there, there are other uh, design challenges out there, um, other things that other students have created. Uh, spend, spend time poking around on the website to see what you can find. Uh, you'll, you'll find all sorts of cool stuff. Uh, definitely something that'll get you excited and hopefully something that will get your students excited as well. Okay, well, with that then, uh, I'll let you go. Um, when you're finished here, please go back to the web page that you used to get to this uh, uh, workshop room and take the two uh, evaluations, please. There's, there's one for ISBE and one for IMSA. I'd really appreciate you doing both of those. And once you're done with that, have a wonderful weekend. Uh, it's been a pleasure. And I hope uh, the rest of your school year is wonderful. Thanks. Goodbye, everybody. Thank you so much.